Welcome to this introductory video presentation of the Kurzweil PC3 sound editor software. The Kurzweil PC3 is a powerful multi-turbo synth and the ultimate performance controller, combining Kurzweil's proprietary VAST, KB3, and VA1 technologies. The sound editor software allows you to reach inside and manipulate the almost endless list of available parameters using a beautiful, intuitive user interface. The onboard screen of the PC3 does allow you to edit the many features and functions of this newest Kurzweil flagship. However, the limited real estate of this screen simply doesn't allow you to develop your own custom sounds with near the efficiency of the PC3 sound editor. The ability to see many parameters at a glance and to access a multitude of available pages quickly makes the editing process far more creative and intuitive. So let's get started. When you start up the PC3 sound editor, you will be presented with this screen. Before proceeding, we must establish a connection between the PC3 and the computer. This can be done through the use of a common MIDI interface. However, the PC3 features a USB interface on the rear of the keyboard to eliminate the need for a separate MIDI interface and cables. Attach a USB cable between the PC3 and your computer. Then select MIDI setup from the MIDI menu. You will notice a number of references to the PC3 in the list of connections. Select the first Kurzweil PC3 as the MIDI in port and the first Kurzweil PC3 as the MIDI out port. Do not use the virtual port connections. Click Done and that's it. You will notice that the startup screen will be the program page and is divided into three main columns with rows of navigation buttons across the top and a readout window indicating the program you are accessing. In the left column, there are 16 slots representing the 16 MIDI channels that can be loaded with the many versatile programs listed in the center column. Click and drag the scroll bar on the right side of the center column to see the staggering list of available sounds. If I wish to place a sound in the first available slot or MIDI channel 1, all I have to do is highlight slot 1 in the left column, then select a sound from the center column. Before doing this, click all programs to be sure that all the available sounds are ready to be selected. Clicking any program in the center column will immediately update slot 1 on the left and we can play that sound. The same process follows for any of the other channels on the left column. The PC3 keyboard will play whichever slot is highlighted. If you wish to narrow your search for sounds, use the buttons on the right-hand column to assist you to find the perfect program. As you can see, there are 16 available banks of sounds available. This is one way the PC3 organizes programs. Each bank has 128 program slots and can all be accessed through bank and program change commands over MIDI if needed. As you can see, by selecting any of these banks, an entirely new list of 128 patches are revealed. If you wish to search by instrument family, click one of the category buttons. This will reveal a collection of programs from the family. Select the channel slot on the left, select a program, and repeat as needed. You can also arrange the patch list by alphabetical order or search by name. If you select all programs and scroll down the list, you will notice that there may be some empty slots. If you select the found button, all the blank slots will be removed from the list. The program is the basic building block of the PC3, but there's nothing basic about the concept. Each program can contain up to 32 layers of completely independent sound sources. These layers can be assigned to produce very complex and compelling sounds. By assigning a sound to a channel slot and either double-clicking the program name or hitting the edit button, the various layers that make up the program are revealed. Selecting Rock Piano 1974 shows a program made up of two layers. The keyboard icon indicates that this is a simple split using the same sound source. One reason the programmer seems to have decided to split the sound was to allow the higher range of notes to be lowered by 1 dB in volume relative to the lower range. The common button reveals parameters that will be common to all layers of the program. Program effects shows effects that all layers will run through. Controls represent the top panel faders 
and K-Zones provides a simple way to establish splits and layers between the various sounds in the program. By selecting Cold Piano, we see that this is a four-layer program. This program is obviously based on an acoustic piano, but there are some other things going on. The keyboard image reveals that the four layers cover the entire playable range, so it would seem that all the sounds would play across the entire keyboard. Let's take a look. First, let's turn off the two sounds that are not piano sounds. A closer look at the names of the first two layers shows that one has mezzo piano indicated in its name and the other mezzo forte. If we solo the mezzo piano sound in layer one and strike the keyboard at various velocities, we will notice that at a certain point, this layer stops playing. If we then solo layer two, we will see that the opposite is true, that layer two only responds to higher velocity. We can drill down into the details of the individual layers by clicking the layer bar or the edit switch. We see that this is a stereo layer using a left and right sound source. As previously discussed, this program is a layered sound and the layers are controlled by velocity. Layer one is a mezzo piano sound and we must limit the range of played velocities. This is accomplished with these two controls, enable min and enable max. We see that this layer will play across the entire note range from velocity zero to velocity 73. If we close this layer and open layer two, we will notice the same stereo sound source except the mezzo forte version. It also covers the entire note range, but from velocity 74 to velocity 127. This allows the entire range of the keyboard to play a more accurate representation of the response of an acoustic piano by using different multi-samples to respond to velocity level. If we now go back to the layer page and turn off the piano, we can audition the sounds that make up the lushness of this layered sound. We can see that there is a string sound and a pad sound that makes up this program, and that they are both significantly lower in volume relative to the piano layers. We can adjust these to achieve a different balance that may better suit our needs. A row of buttons along the top show a number of pages that can be used to edit the various parameters of this single layer. There's far too much to cover in this video, but it can be seen that the opportunities to modify the tiniest of detail is possible. It must be remembered that this level of detail in editing is possible on each of the 32 layers that can make up a single program, and that the PC3 can have 16 channels of separate programs playing at one time. That's a lot of power. The Kurzweil PC3 boasts an additional sound engine called the KB3. By its name, it's apparent that one of the features of the KB3 architecture is to emulate the sound of a Hammond B3 organ. There are other sounds created in this section of the PC3, but let's take a quick look at this comprehensive organ emulation. Selecting the KB3 button on the main page provides a list of organ tones available. A click of the edit button reveals a vast palette of customizable functions particular to the creation of authentic B3 tones. The initial drawbar setting that is called up when this patch is selected is indicated here. This can be modified from this page and saved to something more useful for your needs. Artistic use of the front panel drawbars on the PC3 during performance will enhance the artistic emulation of classic organ tones. A fully parametric EQ is provided to dial in a great tone. 
percussion, and key click are also significant elements of the Hammond sound, and these important parameters are available for you to set as needed. Front panel switches on the PC3 are provided above the drawbars to control percussion and vibrato settings, as well as a Leslie rotating speaker emulator. These are key elements to getting that sound that has been the staple of pop, rock, and gospel keyboards for decades. Let's touch on the effects section of the PC3. We will select the NYC Jazz Grand Program and click Edit to open this patch. When we click Program Effects, we notice that there are two aux buses. In this case, a short reverb has been assigned to aux 1 and a send amount set to minus 6 dB. However, when we play the patch when it's first selected, there is no reverb. That's because the program has been set up to have the ninth fader on the front panel of the PC3 control the amount of signal sent to this effects bus. Minus 6, as indicated on this page, will be the maximum signal that is sent. As you play and raise the level of the fader, the effect can be heard. If we wish to change a parameter on this effect, just click on the name and a list of available effects will appear. We aren't going to select a new effect, but simply modify what we already have programmed. So just click the Edit button. Here we see an effects chain called OmniStage. I will explain the effects chain concept in a moment. OmniStage is made up of a single effects device. We can change any number of parameters associated with this effect, such as reverb time, or pre-delay. If you wish to dig deeper into this effect, click More, and additional parameters will be made available. If we wish to add to the effects chain, select Fun. We can add an effect before or after the current effect. We will select After. Then we will select an effect for this slot. We'll choose 225 Big Slow Flange. Now the reverb from the first slot is passed through a flanger before it's mixed back with the main signal. Here the reverb is being flanged, not the main piano sound. If this isn't the sound you're looking for, select a new one or delete this effect slot completely. Returning to the cold piano program from an earlier example, we will first turn off the string and pad layers so we can better hear what is going on in this example of the use of effects. If we click the Program Effects button, we will be presented with the Effects section, but in this case, the effects chain has been made part of the sound source by using the Insert function. Clicking on the Insert Effects name and choosing Edit, we can see what makes up this sound. Turning the other layers back on reveal how rich this program is made by making use of the effects chain as an integral part of the sound and not applying the effects through the aux bus. Before we go to the last section of the PC3 sound editor, the Effect tab on the top of the main page opens a global effects page to access and control the two effects buses for the 16 channels. The EQ and Comp tab opens a master equalizer and compressor page that affects the master output of the PC3. Entering the setup pages of the PC3 reveals another universe of power and control. Each setup bank is a collection of programs assigned to the 16 channel slots. Here you can set up layered or split sounds, program a single key or button to trigger a drum groove or bass line, chord changes or an arpeggiated sequence. The switches on the left side allow access to common parameters for the setup, including common, which are global for the setup, and controls, sliders, switches, program switches, and riff. The setup effects is the same global page we described earlier, and the EQ and Comp page reveals that the current setup is subject to the master EQ and Comp, 
or we can have a custom EQ and comp as part of the saved setup. The buttons along the top of the page allow access to the channels that make up the setup. Here we have selected the first setup included in the default PC library called TechnoRiff. If we select channel 1, we see the Maroon Drum program is selected. And if we click the Riff button, we see that a song called Riff 247 Techno Drums 1 is set to be triggered by A sharp 0 and released by playing A0. If we select channel 2, we see the Born Remix drum program is selected and that it is set to play Riff 242 and is triggered on and off by C sharp 1 and C1 respectively. Clicking the other channel buttons reveals similar parameters, each one being triggered by different sets of keys. If we hit the Program Switches button, we will see that each of these riffs attached to the channels can also be turned on and off by the eight program switches on the front panel of the PC3. Let's build a groove using these various riffs. It would be impractical in this introduction to the sound editor for the PC3 to explore every parameter available in this incredibly powerful synth and master controller. We hope that you've been able to catch a glimpse of the possibilities and that you will make use of this outstanding editing tool to tailor your Kurzweil PC3 to meet your needs in the studio and on the stage. Explore and enjoy the possibilities. Mm -hmm.